What we're going to celebrate here on the weekend of April 22nd and 23rd in the year 2023 is the 100th anniversary of the official dedication of the Stewart Observatory. And I guess you could say that's our birthday. Even though the telescope has been in operation more than 100 years, it was sort of the day that everyone celebrated. Well, I arrived at Stewart Observatory 40 years ago as a 22-year-old graduate student. I received my PhD in astronomy from the University of Arizona in 1988. I tend to have a talent for teaching and for telling stories. I've also sort of become the historian because it's something I'm interested in. I do love history. So I went to Special Collections in the summertime and spent a couple of days there, reading through the papers of Andrew Ellicott Douglas. Andrew Ellicott Douglas was the first faculty member with a degree in physics and astronomy to teach here at the University of Arizona. And immediately he wanted a telescope. So what did a guy do if he wanted to build a telescope? He had to find a rich widow because that's how science was done in the late 19th and early 20th century, through philanthropy. So he met a very interesting woman. Her name was Lavinia Stewart. Turns out Mrs. Stewart had been thinking about giving money in honor of her late husband to the university. And she was an amateur astronomer. She had her own telescope. So in 1916, she donated the first major grant that the university had ever scored. They broke ground here in 1919 at the corner of Cherry Avenue and 2nd Street. This was previously an ostrich farm. They settled on this location because it was off campus. It was away from the lights of main campus. And in special collections here at the University of Arizona Library, we have many photographs that Douglas took on the construction of the mount and the telescope structure. He had prints of what the campus looked like, the construction process, pictures of individual astronomers who came to visit, aerial shots of campus. And Campus Avenue came all the way out to Stewart Observatory and ran a ring around it. There were tennis courts built where the psychology building is at the moment. I was able to read his correspondence. It was really exciting to feel that connection that we are a part of a continuation. The telescope itself was a 36 inch Newtonian reflecting telescope. The eyepiece was way at the top of the tube. So they built an elevator platform up in the dome. And finally, April 23rd, 1923, the Stewart Observatory is officially dedicated and accepted by the regents of the state of Arizona. When the Stewart Observatory opened, it was primarily a research tool. At the same time, the lobby was used as a classroom. The original front door, which was closed in 1960, when the first additional buildings were built, is right here. The National Observatory was founded on Kitt Peak in 1958, and the Stewart 36-inch telescope was moved to Kitt Peak in 1963. Things really picked up in terms of the size of the facilities starting in the 60s. The size of the department also started to grow. Stewart Observatory is the name of the research unit, not just this building and the telescope. So today it includes the telescopes on Mount Lemmon and Mount Bigelow, the telescopes we have, including a radio telescope on Kitt Peak, on Mount Graham and Mount Hopkins. And what's wonderful is that while the dome and telescope started their history together, they both continue to be involved in research and education. And the dome now has the Ray White Jr. 21-inch telescope, and it's still getting used. The observatory building now is not only an educational center, but it's also an inspiration too, because it looks cool. At least locally, it's become iconic. It's a symbol for 
From humble beginnings, great things can grow. In his dedication speech, Douglas gave us our vision and mission statement. To me, it's still very inspiring. Even though he was the entire observatory at the time, he was anticipating there would be students, there would be other researchers in the future, women and men coming together to explore the universe and share what we learn with the public. I sometimes wonder what it would be like if Professor Douglas could see us. Would he have even conceived that what he started could have become such a large institution? I would think he'd be proud. I would hope he'd be proud of us, that we continued his dream and continued the work that he felt was important.